They say necessity is the mother of invention, but in parts of Africa, it has also become the mother of flight. From homemade runways to handcrafted engines, daring creators are pushing the limits of what's possible. While some rise into the sky, others are reminded that gravity never negotiates. Let's go! Meet Gabriel Ndiridu, a man so optimistic he makes motivational speakers look pessimistic. Uh, Gabriel Ndiridu, he's a Kenyan guy, he's kind of an entrepreneur, he has one big dream in his life and that is to build his own aircraft from scrap. Gabriel is getting closer to his lifelong dream of flying his own aircraft, assuming closer means still firmly planted on the ground. He's even branded his aircraft with the romantic name Upendo, which is Swahili for love. Clearly, this is a love story but with a bitter ending. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? As he prepares for takeoff in his Upendo aircraft, Enderitu, with almost no aircraft experience but all the confidence in the world, checks his aircraft with the seriousness of a NASA engineer. You've got to admire the dedication. He's like a chef who's never cooked before, but insists on preparing a five-course meal. He's determined to be successful this time, because his previous 12 attempts have all failed. That's not persistence. That's a scientific study in how many ways one aircraft can disappoint you. At this point, the ground has seen more of Upendo than the sky ever will. It sucks! Blame the shit! To everyone's surprise, including probably his own, Upendo glides across the makeshift runway and even manages to get airborne, but as always, Upendo comes crashing down almost immediately. Even nature seems to be against Enderitu, but Enderitu is not one to give up so easily. He looks over the ruins of his upendo, undeterred, determined to fulfill his lifelong dream someday. To crush Gabriel's ambitions, the 47-year-old IT consultant has been building aircrafts with knowledge acquired from the internet. Ten months later, our genius inventor finally abandons his aircraft project for a more realistic green energy project. For now, however, Deritu will take a break to stock up on supplies before building his 14th aircraft. 13 is not a lucky number after all. Perhaps he finally discovered that solar panels don't crash. How? Hold on, bro. How? Meanwhile, in Eswatini, a man decides to make his own little bird. Though simple and small, the design looks very promising, almost as if it would work. Almost being the key word here. Soon, it's time for takeoff. The helicopter blades begin to spin with all the enthusiasm of a ceiling fan on a hot day. But the aircraft seems too concerned with workplace safety and decides not to get off the ground. I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. It's like the helicopter took one look around and said, you know what, I'm comfortable right here, thanks. Stop the cap. <laughs> Stop the cap right now! Talk about a grounded aircraft. Even the plane doesn't trust his inventor. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. Ugandan inventor Joseph Nkahiza gets inspiration for a helicopter while repairing a fan. A mechanic by profession, Nkahiza is determined to make a helicopter, despite having almost no knowledge of planes. But hey, who needs aeronautical engineering when you have confidence in a toolbox? I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. He assembles every scrap piece of metal he can find and makes a quite unique design, unlike any helicopter we've seen before. And there's probably a very good reason why no one has seen this design before, because helicopters that look like this usually exist only in nightmares and abstract art. On testing day, Nkahiza steps into his chopper, ready to show what his little invention can do. For a moment, he seemed to be doing pretty well with it. But just when you think everything's going smoothly, this happened. This is what happened. In hospital, he took months for him to recover. That's what happens when you try to land a plane without any flying experience. The crash didn't hurt Nkahiza too much, besides the few months he spent in the hospital. He is determined to learn from it and deploy new tech for his next design. Nice.
Faisha Bayin is an Ethiopian man passionate about making his own aircraft. And after years of designing, his masterpiece is finally ready for its flight, or more accurately, test drive. He and his collaborator. <laughs> push the aircraft onto the stretch of road meant to act as the runway. They seem fulfilled, happy, and confident that their design will work. <laughs> Bain even appears to be giving them some instructions, as if he has any idea what he's doing. <laughs> Beside the runway, a lot of people gather to watch this wonderful invention, expecting to see a plane take off. Instead, they get the show of their lives, a very poorly constructed car that runs around aimlessly. Bayin's invention is a plane in every way except for the minor detail of, you know, flying. But at least Bayin managed to come up with a good design. The next aircraft was so terrible that it looked like it could fall apart at any time. <laughs> A man attempts to construct a helicopter, but his creation is basically a tricycle with an identity crisis. <laughs> From its appearance, it's clear he's never seen an actual helicopter in his life. Come on now, dawg. Come on, man. Maybe just heard someone describe one over a bad phone connection. As the two men power up the aircraft to test it, the engine sounds closer to a milling machine than a helicopter. <laughs> it's the kind of sound that makes you think, that's not taking off, that's taking apart. But they believe in their invention, so they continue with the tests as planned. However, as they move along the runway, it becomes clear that their invention is never leaving the ground, and their helicopter is nothing but a glorified tricycle with a very loud engine. No, God! No, God, please, no! Two brothers in Ghana have been working on their homemade aircraft for years, and their design is pretty impressive. Despite using local materials like plywood and aluminum sheets, the brothers came up with an impressive design that looks almost like a real plane. Nice. But here's where things get interesting. They somehow forgot to include a space for the battery when building the plane. It's like building a beautiful house and forgetting to install doors. So now they're forced to use an external battery to test the aircraft. Once the engine sparks to life, the brothers decide to take the plane for a short test ride. They claim the plane can fly, but they are unable to fly because they do not have the necessary licenses. I don't think you have the facilities for that, big man. <laughs> so let me get this straight. You built a plane that can supposedly fly, but you can't fly it because of paperwork. We can use this aircraft for police to patrol around and also for our hospitals to also spray as a mosquito insecticide and also for farming to sprinkle the water to uh, uh, their farmings. We can also build as a cargo aircraft that can load. Good luck using a plane that can't even get off the ground to transport cargo. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Ah, oh, sh. Here we go again. Kenya is home to some of Africa's biggest inventors, and leading the charge is 21 year old engineering graduate George Tamudi. Fresh out of school with a degree and a dream, George has set his sights on making what he describes as a micro light. Micro light is a type of aircraft that is designed for one or two passengers. Now, I don't want to be that guy, but his micro light bears an uncanny resemblance to what the rest of us would call a regular glider. It's like calling a bicycle a ground-based personal transportation device technically accurate, but we all know what it really is. Like the expert engineer he is, George meticulously checks through his aircraft's engine to make sure everything is in place for his test flight. Checking the then comes the moment of truth. George straps himself to his micro light ready for his test flight. The crowd gathers, cameras start rolling, and everyone holds their breath waiting to witness aviation history. Except George hits us with a plot twist nobody saw coming. He can't actually fly it because he doesn't have the required aviation license. Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. 
Get out of here, man. Shit. I'm saying. But here's the thing, there's no guarantee Tamudi's micro light would actually fly anyway, especially considering it's powered by a 100 horsepower engine. While George Tamudi may have been unlucky, the next guy on our list at least got his chance to soar with the birds. And he didn't just fly, he flew as high as a normal helicopter. Granted, it was with a weird shaped rotor that looked like it had been stolen from a scrapyard, but. <laughs> hey, we're not judging. Sometimes the best inventions come from the most unexpected places. The next inventor on our list couldn't get materials for a real plane, so he built this instead. Unfortunately, he couldn't get it to fly. My disappointment is immeasurable. Now, if you think you've seen some fancy aircraft so far, wait until you see our next pilot. Let's love it, let's love it. This guy didn't just build an aircraft, he actually built a jet. However, he still has a long way to go. The engine is far from complete, but Chris is still optimistic that he will finish his jet one day. As we take this project up, I expect to be one of the participating flying pilots for this project. You've got to admire that kind of ambition. 